Hey everyone, I'm Aria, and it started snowing here in parts of Canada, so I was thinking it would be a good time to do a snow simulation. If you enjoy my work, please consider subscribing to the channel, and you can also support me in growing the channel by becoming a member of my Patreon page, and you'll get access to the animation files from the channel as well. Alright, let's begin. First hit A on your keyboard to select everything, and then hit delete. Shift A, mesh, and we'll click plane. Next, we want to scale this up, so hit S and type in 20. Then we can just zoom out a little bit. So we need to go into Edit Mode by hitting Tab, or again, you can click up here. Right click and choose Subdivide. Bring your mouse to the bottom here, open up this little sub menu, click here and type in 100. If you've got a slower computer, you can just set this to 75. We're not doing that much detail anyway, so this is probably a little bit overkill. So don't get too carried away on this part, but basically what we want to do is select the vertice in the back corner. Then a really simple way to get uh, nice big hills is to just go up here and turn on the proportional editing. Now if we hit G to move and hit Z to lock to the Z axis, we can bring this up. If we just scroll down on the mouse wheel, you see that our influence increases so that we can just grab some more. It doesn't really matter exactly how you do this, just roughly the same will work. Next, you can click a vertice over here, GZ, and we're just going to do the same thing. Scroll up on the mouse wheel just to lower the influence area just a little bit. Now that you've got the idea, you just want to do this on this side as well. And then just on different parts of your mesh. You can also hold Ctrl and Plus if you want to grab a larger area. I brought some of the edges down just because it gives a better fall off when we mix it with the background. And as well, I made a dip in the center, so again, GZ, and you can just bring up the influence a little bit. This does not have to be perfect by any means, just make sure that you've got something that has some variations. But one more important thing that I did was uh, this end here, I just made sure to bring this up as well, which will just help us control the momentum of the snowballs. So just grab a few of these vertices as well and just bring them up. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect, you just want something that you can get uh, some momentum off of, so I'm going to leave it at that for now. Then once we add our rigid body simulation, if we do need to make some changes, it's very easy to quickly change that. Hit tab again to go back into object mode. Then just to make things a little bit easier for us, I'm just going to rotate this ground on the Z axis. So hit R, Z, and type in 45. Just come around to the side. Then we just want to rotate this on the Y, so R, Y, and we can just type in 4. G, Z, and we can just bring this up. Awesome, so that's looking great, that should work just fine. Since we're doing a simulation, we want to make sure that we reset our scale, so if I hit N on the keyboard, you can see our scale is set to 20. So what we can do is make sure we've got it selected, hold control, hit A, and select scale. Now that we're done that, what we can do is go over to the physics properties on the right hand side. And then we'll add a rigid body. We don't want this to be active, so select here and click passive. Then the most important thing here is we need to change our shape from convex hull to mesh. This way Blender will take all of our mesh into consideration. And that's it, so the next thing we need to do is add our snowball. So shift A, mesh, and we're going to click icosphere. Then we just want to set our subdivisions to 3. Next we'll just bring this up, so G and Z just to bring this up, then G, X to bring it back. Depending on how you made yours, just make sure that this is going to drop and hit the front side. Otherwise, it could fall off one of the edges here. So now we're going to scale this, so S and type in 1.2. Then right click and shade smooth. Great, so back over to the physics properties. Click rigid body and we're going to leave this as active. Again, we want to change this shape to mesh. It's always a good idea to save before you run your simulations. Click down here to head back to frame 1 and hit play. You could just let your snowball fall off the edge, but we want ours to stay in the middle. So what we'll do is head back to frame 1, click on our mesh and we'll hit tab. Then again, we just want to take some of these edges here and hit G just to bring them up just so that if our snowball makes it this far, it'll start to roll back. And you can also just bring the center down as well. Like that. Okay, so hit tab to go back into object mode. 
back to frame 1 and you can hit play again. Great, so that's working now. You can see that it ends a bit short, so I'm just going to increase the animation length to 500, just so that there's a bit more to work with. We also need to increase the rigid body cache size. So over on the right hand side, you can click the scene properties, which is where you'll find the rigid body settings. So click here, then open up the cache settings and we're going to set this to 500. Save and then if we go back to frame one and hit play, you'll see that our simulation has a lot more to work with. So that's pretty much it for the rigid body. If you do want to add a secondary snowball, what you can do is just click this one, hold shift, hit D, then we'll just hit Y just so we can bring it over a little bit. Also want to bring this forward just so that it's falling down the front and not the back side. Now if we hit play, you'll see that we've got the exact same thing happening, but they're taking different pathways. Now that we've got everything and we're happy with our rigid body, we can bake our simulation and this should only take a few seconds. Great, so now you can just scroll through if you want and just see your whole simulation. Make sure to save as well and now we can move on to our dynamic paint. So just select the plane, then we're going to duplicate this. So shift D and we'll just hit Z just to lock to the Z only. Then you can type in something like 0.8 just so that we bring this up enough that our snowballs can go through but they don't want to sink into it. Next head over to the physics properties again. Since we have a rigid body underneath, we do not need to have this and it won't work correctly if we leave it on, so just make sure that you remove the rigid body by clicking here. Then click dynamic paint. And since we want this to be displaced, we're going to leave this as canvas and click add canvas. Everything can be left to default except for the surface type. We want to change that to displace. Now we can click on our snowballs. For these, we do want to leave on the rigid body but we're also going to add a dynamic paint, then change the type to brush, and then click add brush. So let's click the next one here, leave the rigid body on, click dynamic paint, select the type to brush, and add brush. I always like to save before moving on, so save, head back to frame 1, and hit play. Awesome, so that's looking pretty good. They're a little bit on the same path, so what I'm going to do is head back to frame 1, and I'm just going to grab this one and just move it over a bit and bring this one a little bit forward as well. Then you'll see if I hit play, it kind of jumps. And the reason that's happening is because we've already baked our rigid body. So what you can do is just head back to the scene properties, delete your bake, just reset the speed, for example, which will just cause Blender to recalculate things. So if I hit play now, you can see that it is working correctly, but our dynamic paint isn't. So we can just do the same thing, head over to the dynamic paint properties. Then we can just remove the canvas, add it again, and select Displace. And now you see that it's working a lot better. And things are looking really good. So you can see that they kind of started simulating together. So just a couple things to keep in mind. If you were to go to the rigid body and bake at this point, you're going to find issues with your dynamic paint. And the reason why is because if we don't go to frame 1, it will start baking the rigid body, but it won't know where to start the dynamic paint. So the best thing to do is always make sure that you're on frame one when you bake as well. So we're good with both of our simulations. So I'm just going to hit bake and you can see that this says bake physics, which is going to bake our dynamic paint right along with it. Once that's complete, make sure to save and you can hit play. And now you'll see that everything is working correctly. And if we were to scroll through, there's no issues at all. Our simulation is complete, the only other things that we have to do is add materials and lighting. So you can see that there's a bit of uh, ridges happening here, so the best thing to do is head over to the modifiers properties, click here and add a subdivision surface. Then I wouldn't set this to more than one or two, just because it will slow down your simulation. You can see there's still a little bit left, so if you do set this to two, it will completely remove that, but this will cost you a little bit of performance, so just keep that in mind. Zoom out a bit and you can see that we've got our other ground plane here which we no longer need to see. So head up to the right here and we're going to click our filter toggles. The middle one will be kept on but the visibility will be turned off in both the viewport and the render. This will keep it active as part of our simulation. We can already move on to setting up our lighting and materials. So click over here to go to the world properties. Then instead of having a color we're going to click this dot and click environment texture. 
Next, click open. Then, as always, if you want to use the same HDRI that I'm using, just go to hdrihaven.com and search for Snowy Park, or you can just follow the link in the description. Then scroll all the way down, and all you need to do is download this one here. I used 4K for mine just because you could see a little bit of the background, but to be honest, mostly it's just for lighting, so you'd be fine with either of these here. Keep in mind that this will add a lot to your render. Pick your version and click open. Then, since we're adding materials, we're just going to head over to the shading tab. So let's go up to the top and click shading. Zoom out a bit and now we can turn on our render preview. So you can see that we've got super basic lighting. If we just leave it like this, we won't be able to see any of our textures. So let's add a light by hitting Shift A and going to light and clicking sun. When you use a sun in Blender, you don't have to worry about the position, but my personal preference is to move it into roughly the place that it would be, just because I get a better visual representation that way. So let's rotate this by hitting R and X. Then we can just drag our mouse until we've got a little bit of shadow. Then depending on which way you want your sun to be facing, you can hit R and Z and just drag this a little bit. And that's good, like I said, this is all just preference, so you can face this any way you want. The reason I chose this angle is just because it gives us some nice shadow. And I also found that this worked out great for the lighting in the end. Next, you can click on the ground plane. Click new. This texture is different, but I did get some great ideas from a different YouTube artist. So I'm going to throw the link in the description and make sure to check out that video. So first, shift A and then we'll search for bump. Then we want to duplicate this, so shift D to duplicate and do that one more time as well. Then we want to take the normal and hook it up to the normal for each of these, so normal to normal again and normal to normal. I'm going to set the strength of these now just because I know what my settings are, but this basically will just give you more or less bump. So feel free to divert from any of these values here. Next we'll add our first texture, so shift A again and type in noise. Select Noise Texture and we'll hook the factor into the height. We want to make this pretty small so we're going to change the scale to 500 and the detail to 5. Finally, we'll add some distortion so type in 8.3 for that. I'm not sure if you're able to see it uh, through the video but if you zoom in really close you should be able to see some texture. Next we're going to add two color ramps so shift A and type in color ramp. Hook the color into the roughness, then we'll select it, hit shift E, and just bring this up. Then hook this into the base color. So our next texture is going to be a Voronoi, so type in VOR and select this texture. And we'll use two of these, so shift D, and we'll just bring this down. Now we can grab the distance from our bottom Voronoi, then hook it into the height of the second bump map, so the one in the middle. And set the scale to 250. Now you should definitely be able to see some textures. Let's change the scale of our other Voronoi to 50. Switch this to F2 and change this to Manhattan, which will just give us a little bit nicer look. Now we can change the scale of our first Voronoi to 50. Then we do want to mix these together, so Shift A, search, and we'll search for Mix RGB. Then Distance into Color and Distance into Color 2. Take the color output from the mix, then hook it into both of the color ramps. So finally, you can see that we're starting to get our effect here, but it still looks a little bit weird. So we're just going to make a few more changes. You can go to this bottom color ramp and just drag this value all the way over to about 0.67. Then on our top color ramp here, we're going to just select this value and bring it over to about 0.7. And this value over to about 0.05. Click here and we want to turn this into a blue color. And that's it for our textures. So what we can do now is choose one of our snowballs. And instead of clicking new, we're just going to click here and select material. But if I zoom in, you can see that it's a little bit too small. It's not really giving the effect that we want. So I'm going to click here to copy. Make sure to do this so that you're making changes to a new texture instead of the hill texture. Then I'm just going to change a couple of values. So I'm just going to spread this color ramp out again. Then we'll just make a couple of changes to our noise pattern, so scale here, we're going to set this to 24. Head down to our noise texture and we're going to set the scale to 5 and set the distortion to 0. Finally, I just want to add a little bit more bump to this here, so set this to 0.5. And that's looking really good, so that's looking a little bit more like a snowball now. Now that we've got that, we can click on our second snowball, click here and select material 1. 
that's it for our materials. So now what we can do is just increase our lighting. So click the light, head over to the light properties, and we're going to set the strength to 10. And we also want to give it a little bit of a blue tint. So just ever so slightly add some blue to that as well. Save, and that's looking really good. So now that we're done our textures, let's head back to the layout tab. And we can turn on our render preview if you like. Great, so things are looking really good. So we're just going to finish the scene. So let's head over to the render properties. For this animation, we're going to be using Eevee. So let's turn on ambient occlusion, bloom. This is way too strong, so let's just bring this way down to something like 0 0.005. Scroll down, and we can add screen space reflections and refractions. Because we're doing that, we do want to make sure that they're activated in our materials, so click the plane. Head over to the materials properties, and head all the way down. And make sure to select screen space refractions. Then we'll do the same with the snow wall as well. Click it, and screen space refractions. Then save. Now you can see our lighting is looking a lot better. Head back to the render properties. All the way at the bottom, you'll see the film property here. Open that up and uncheck transparent if you want to use this as part of your background. Next, we just want to add some more of these hills. So we can click our plane and shift D, then hit Y, and we can just drag it over for a second. Zoom out a little bit. And since this isn't going to be part of the physics simulations, let's just head over to the physics properties and remove dynamic paint. GZ just to bring this down, and I'm going to scale this, so S to scale. Just bring this back, GX. This will just really depend on what you want your scene to look like, but this should roughly work. You can just rotate this a little bit on the Y, so R and Y. Then let's duplicate this one more time by hitting Shift D, Shift Z, and we'll just bring this over. Then we can rotate, so R and Z, and just swing this around. Something like that should work just fine for now. Since I had my camera set up sort of following this line here, I made sure to just stay focused on this side of the simulation. So that's it. This is how simple a background can be. My snow had a lot of glints in the background, so the way I achieved that was just using depth of field. So shift A and go to camera. Then you can hold control, alt, and hit zero on your numpad. And that should be fine for now. So what we can do is make sure that you got your camera selected and head to the camera properties. Then we want to turn on depth of field, and you can see already that we're starting to get some of the glinting snow. So open this up, and we can lower this f-stop to 0.5. Then click here, and we want to select a focus object, so we can just select one of our snowballs. Then we can even set this a little bit lower to something like 0.2. Now if I just hit F3 and turn the camera, you can just see that we've got this really nice look in the background. The only other thing that I noticed that I'm missing here is just the size change on the snowball. So if you want to do that, it's pretty simple. Just head back to frame 1 and we will need to delete our cache. Click on this here, then we'll head over to our cache for our canvas and hit delete. Then head to the rigid body world settings here in the scene properties and hit delete as well. Save and then what you can do is you can just select one of the snowballs. Right click and insert a keyframe and we'll do the same for this as well. Then hit play and let this fall for a second and you don't want it to start growing right away. So about here, what you can do is right click and insert a keyframe for both of these. Then you just want to hit play just so it moves a little bit further in the simulation. Then at about 150 frames, you can select all of these and type in 1.3 and insert a keyframe. Select this one and we'll do the same. 1.3 and insert a keyframe. Now if I reset the simulation and hit play, you'll see that they slowly grow over time. Keep in mind that this is a bit limited. If you go too much, it will start to mess with your rigid body simulation. So if you're seeing them jumping around, uh, that could be the reason. Like I said, you always want to be on frame 1 before you're baking in this situation. So head back to frame 1 and hit bake. Then once that's baked, it may have baked your dynamic paint as well, but for mine it didn't. So I'm just going to head over head down and hit bake. Sometimes this will say it's baked but it doesn't look correct like it's missing some parts. So if that's the case just hit delete and bake again. I always like to reset one of my values just so Blender recalculates correctly. Then just one more thing if we bake right now it'll be a little bit slow so just head over to the modifier properties and you want to turn the subdivision off. Then head back to the physics, head down and hit bake. And this will bake about 10 times as quickly. Then just head back to the modifiers and turn this back on. And everything is looking great, so I'm just going to set up the camera one more time. 
just to show you some different angles and that should be good so this is pretty much what i do once i've got my simulation all set and saved i start doing my camera work and as i'm doing it i start making sure i hone in my background just go into the camera settings and you can switch this to the other snowball then finally we can head over to the rendering tab also make sure to add some motion blur if you are doing an animation save and render render image and there it is you can see that that took a little bit uh, longer to render and i think the reason is because our depth of field is a little bit high so let's just change it to something like 0.4 or 5. head back and you can render again and you'll see that that cut the render time uh, by about 60 percent so keep that in mind when you are adding stuff like motion blur and depth of field the more you add the longer it will take to render so if you are finding that your render is a bit slow, you could even set this higher if you want. If you enjoyed this tutorial, again, please subscribe to the channel and support my work. As well, if you want to get access to the files that I post every Thursday, you can sign up to become a member of my Patreon page to get access to all the animation files from the channel. I'll see you soon. Bye!